Hi guys, my name is Andy, welcome back to Scottish Dane Productions, another video. Today I'm doing a layout update on Fiddler's Branch for March of 2023. A lot's happened, so let's get on to it. So, as usual, starting on the far left, we have the field area that is looking a lot more like a cornered off field. So, these hedges actually really looked apart rather than the old ones from Javis Scenics. I believe they were Javis Scenics? They're the little flexible green hedge things that I put on Silson Steam Railway the first time. And looking back at it now, they look really crap. Whereas these ones, you know, they've got individual sort of branches, they've got leaves in them, you can sort of see some of the branches on the inside. They just really look the part and they look absolutely fantastic, I really, really like them. The Javis Scenics foliage, I mixed all together, all three of them, the dark, the medium and the light. And I've just carefully jotted them all along here up to this point. And then I put them all the way along the base of the hedge, uh, the hedge, the fence, sorry. And then I carried it around to the right there. Now, only thing I don't like about these um, hedge clumps is once you glue them in, they're still fairly loose. Like these ones down here are kind of loose. The ones over here that I've super glued are hard as a rock. So... When I get round to it, I'm going to get a load of watered down PVA. I'm going to go over absolutely every piece of foliage. Make sure it's stuck down and solid as a rock for the longest time to come. Because I can't count how many times I replaced that light foliage on Selsun Steam Railway. Now, as well as the foliage, here as well as you can see uh, around several bits of layout, there are these uh, foliage, uh, well, foliage or just little uh, shrub clumps. Now these I got for Fiddler's Yard, the first incarnation of this layout. But now what I've done is, as you can see, obviously I've dotted them around on the place and over here, I actually had an issue. With my Class 68, when it gets to about here, all the foliage would stick out and the buffers would clip and it would either knock the foliage off or it would get stuck. So. I had two ways of going about this. One, I take the foliage off, or two, I just don't send uh, the Class 68 up there, but I wanted to send the Class 68 up there. So what I did was I found these, I've added them all along so it just looks like a lot of grass, and now the Class 68 gets through, they're absolutely fine, it just brushes against the bristles, has no issues whatsoever, everything I have gets around there. I'm just terrified of when I eventually get a 153 because I have no idea if that will get around there or not. So with the field, I'm really happy with how it's come. I'm planning to get a couple of birds uh, on the fence. I'm going to get a direction post, a couple of benches, uh, some walkers, maybe someone walking the dog, a couple of photographers, and hopefully just make the scene look a bit more like the countryside. I'm hopefully going to get a couple of trees here maybe, Maybe one or two here and then just one at the end. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about it yet until I get those trees. It won't be until after March. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it's come out. I'd happily take this to an exhibition right now if I had to. But as it stands right now, it's going to be like 95% complete. The whole layout by the time I get it to its first exhibition in August. Now kind of continuing on the topic of foliage, you will see it along the brick retaining wall here. I've done the foliage all the way along, as I said, but for now it stops right there. Why is it going to stop right there? Well, because over here is where hopefully one of the bridge supports is going to go. Because I do intend on having a road bridge going across there. Oh, come on camera, focus. Thank you, sunshine. Now. What I'm going to use to actually make the bridge support, I don't know. I was tempted to add a support over here as well, but it looks like there's just going to be a support here, the bridge, and then the footbridge down. 
and then that will be it for the footbridge. That's going to be the hardest bit of this layout because most of that is either going to be scratch built or kit bashed and lord knows I hate kit bashing. So for now I'm very happy with how the foliage looks, I think it looks really good, looks apart and I'm very happy to leave it where it is for now, I just like I said I've got to get some more watered down PVA and then I'm going to get it all sorted solid as a rock for the longest lifetime to come of this layout which I have no idea how long that's going to be. Now like I said before just over there with the field I added some of these little clumps of grass, uh, self adhesive little things all around the layout. As I just pan the camera around now you'll see the dotted absolutely everywhere. And like I said before, what I'm trying to give the impression of with this layout is that the railway, or this section of line, is very much at the end of its life. It's been abused, it's been neglected, it doesn't really get that much maintenance anymore. So wildlife is kind of taking over. So if I get some other ones, maybe I'll get some dead ones, maybe I'll add a couple of branches, maybe some leaves. All the stuff to show that this line is very much neglected. And on top of that, I am going to weather this track eventually because it is just too clean. This looks like an extension on a heritage line that's just been opened. But no, for now, the ballast is going to stay the way it is until I can get the confidence to ballast this. Because if I screw it up, it's going to look horrendous and I will not be able to undo it. So until then, this stays completely clean. Now in the previous layout update, I mentioned I was going to add some cable trunking to this layout. Unfortunately... I did the stupid mistake of not getting the cable trunk in first and then ballasting because when I try to add the cable trunking in it sits say that's the ballast height it sits like all the way up there so like I said uh, in one of the other videos where I took the ballast load out of that hopper in order to get this ballast up to get that cable trunking in I'd have to use hot water boiling water this layout is very much cardboard based, so it could warp, it could wreck, it would absolutely ruin the layout if I rip up this ballast. So it's a learning curve for now. There is no cable trunking on this, but I did add just over here. There it is. I did add this line side uh, cabinet, courtesy of, I believe it's a... Uh, Dusty Lion Flower or Lego Bricks Bits. He's done a lot of model stuff on eBay. I will leave a link to his shop in the description. These came pre-made. They're absolutely fantastic. The bar that is in front of it is actually an old Allen key that I have that I just cut the end of this bit of to make sure it wasn't ridiculously high. It sort of just works where it's at waist height. So if you fall back, you're not going to fall into the track and get your head sliced off. The foundation it's on is actually a tiny piece of card that the uh, line side cabinets came in. So everything that has come with it has been reused on this layout. And I'm very happy with the way it looks. But for now, it's very good with the way it looks. The only other thing that's going to get added to the back side of this layout is I'm going to get a security fence going all the way along the back up to the very backs all the way over there. So that's the only other bit of scenery that's not in the field or on the station that I have also yet to do. Now actually speaking of the station, this is the thing that's going to actually take the longest to complete because before I can even start on any more of the scenery work that I've already done on this, I have to complete the road bridge and the footbridge. Why? Because without that, I don't know where I'm going to put anything. So until then, it's only going to be very minor changes to the appearance of the station. Like for example, I've added these fences here and here. Focus. And with the paving slabs, I've found where all the grooves are. And just with my modeling scalpel, I've kind of just scraped the paint away so you can actually see the individual slabs. And I think it looks miles better. It actually looks like a station and not just a block of gray in the middle of my layout. Now, like I said, only minor things are going to change about this station. Like I might add some anti-trespasser grids here. 
I might add a couple of signs, I might get the uh, name board done, I might get the shelter. But until that footbridge is done and I know whereabouts on the platform the footbridge is going to land, no scenery can go down whatsoever past that little shrub there. God forbid that footbridge actually comes out that far because that would be horrendous. So, with the footbridge itself, now if you look over here, this here is the lowest the bridge can go because that is, I've tested it, everything goes through there. So that is the lowest the footbridge can go. I was under the, uh, the imagination that the bridge was going to be all the way up here, but that's not the case. So it's going to be a relatively low one to kind of keep everything nice and tight and compact, keep all the scenery there just in one place. So we're going to have the bridge and then a little footbridge down and then I should have there the absolute furthest where the footbridge will come out. It could be there, it could be there, it could be all the way over here. God forbid it's all the way over there, flipping heck. But the footbridge is the thing I'm worried about the most because that is something I'm either going to have to kit bash or scratch build. Kit bash, I'm not too fussed about. I just hate doing it because it always goes wrong. Scratch building, that's going to be another huge issue. I know I can do it, but it's probably going to be the slowest thing I ever do. A tortoise would be faster than me at scratch building. So that's everything I've done. I've talked about a few things that I'm going to do, but what can you expect next time I do a layer update? Well, next time I do a layer update, this field will have figures, it will have some birds, it will have benches. This field should be complete, so I shouldn't have to worry about any of that. Down here, uh, all this will be glued in and rock solid, as well as all these. These shrubs, uh, don't really need to worry about those. The security fencing along the back wall will be finished. And then when it finishes over there, I'm going to add some, uh, probably some more of this um, foliage. It's kind of just give the idea that, you know, the train line used to carry on, but Mother Nature's taken over. I'm thinking about adding some rusted congregated uh, metal sheets along some of these brick walls to give the idea that, you know, these walls have been here for so long, they've cracked, they've deteriorated. The council or whoever maintains this area have done some sort of effort to keep the wall together to stop the whole railway line collapsing and they've just slapped this metal sheet on and then left it that. So I might do something like that. And I'm also planning to completely revamp the wiring underneath, just tidy it up, get it sorted. This layout currently only runs on 12 volts DC. So I've got to sort that out. I've got to get the 16 volts uh, AC plug connected to the controller all the way over there. And then this layout should be at its absolute peak operational uh, ability. So for now, guys, thank you so much for watching this layout update. Thank you for coming back. I hope you've liked the progress. I'm certainly enjoying the progress. If you like the video, leave a like and a good comment. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike and a bad comment. Is there any suggestions you guys want to give me about the layout? If so, leave them down in the comments and I'll have a look. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video and see you later. Bye for now.